Hello and welcome to Beyond Technique, the podcast that empowers photographers to bring their businesses to the next level. Brought to you by Platypod, PhotoFocus, and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young and I'm joined by my co-host and social distancing buddy, Skip Cohen. Boy, isn't that the truth? <laughs> I'm I got, telling I got you. all excited yesterday because our daughter-in-law uh, sent us handmade masks. I mean, Aww, seriously. That's so sweet. Uh, Mine is a pirate, and Sheila's got bumblebees. So <laughs> the, the fun thing about the pirate is that living in Florida, it looks like it's the Buccaneer logo. So That's I have a perfect. feeling that I am i can't wait to go into a non-social distancing mode and having run to the supermarket and wear my new mask. <laughs> I don't know about you, but through this pandemic, I am constantly looking for something to fill in a gap on time wise mm -hmm. now because i'm a writer and i do podcasts and blog and all of that stuff i'm probably a little busier than most people are right now but on the other side of the coin i am having so much fun just following some of the some of our own content over at platypod.com on the blog mm -hmm. and also on instagram oh for sure you know it's a lot of photographers have downtime right now, needless to say. And one of the things that we can be doing is projects at home to stay creative. And you're absolutely right. Platypod is putting out a bunch of cool content on their blog about project ideas that we as photographers and creatives can do at home. So I highly encourage our listeners to go check out platypod.com slash blog. Just yesterday, we posted about macro photography that you can do in your own home. Another photographer, Joe Pellicone, we have a blog post from him about how you don't even need to leave your car to take some cool photos. We've got some Lego photography as well on the blog. It's just a ton of cool ideas that we can do to stay creative right now. And then if you run out of what you're reading on the blog wander over to Instagram because Hilmar Smith is sharing something every single day over on the Instagram page. Yes. And it's just, it's from photographers from, and they're not necessarily professional. Some are just good, strong, serious hobbyists. Others are working professionals and they're all things that they're doing to change their perspective on the way they're capturing images. And there's some very cool and fun ideas there, especially to take advantage of during this pandemic. Very inspiring. So let's get this show on the road because we've got a great one today. Yes, yes. We have got Charles and Jennifer Marring with us today. And this is truly a kick. And I use that expression a lot, but this one really is a kick. Uh, they have been friends of mine for a whole lot of years, going back to my early, early WPPI days. Both of them are artists, they're photographers, they're podcasters, they're writers, educators, and they couldn't be more diverse in their focus on business. They're also both Panasonic Lumix ambassadors, and they were two of the very first artists to take prototypes of the new Platyball ball head out for a field review right after WPPI. Most important of all, and the reason they're joining us on Beyond Techniques today, is the way they've changed their business over the years. Today, Marring Visuals regularly demonstrates their commitment to imaging, but together in style comes a wide variety of lifestyle topics well beyond just photography. Now, right now, we're all going through the same challenge, and your diversity and your skill set as a photographer has never been more important. The pandemic has changed all our lives, but we're not going to be hunkered down forever, and we want to help you with ideas so you hit the ground running when things get back to some level of normalcy. And maybe there's some things that are going to come up today in the conversation that will help you change some of the things you're doing right now while you are hunkered down. So, Charles and Jennifer, if I didn't totally screw up technology here, welcome to Beyond Technique. Hi, how are you guys today? Good to be here. It's good to have you guys here. We're so excited to have you both. You two are definitely the dynamic duo of creativity. And, <laughs> you know, we like to kick things off with our favorite first question. And this is to the both of you or either one that wants to take it. But could you just kind of enlighten us on how you got started? Uh, give us your background and kind of evolution of how you got to what you're doing today. 
Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm a second generation photographer. My dad was a photo enthusiast growing up, uh, built a dark room in the house and uh, about the time I was seven years old. And so just seeing a first print come to life um, as a young child, it's like it's like magic, you know. And so um, I learned to print long before I picked up a camera. And then uh, in my high school years, I started picking up the camera and moving forward with it. And uh, it's just evolved from there. And uh, my, my father photographed some weddings and portraits uh, uh, when I was in high school, but then I just kind of took all of that and ran with it. And so uh, it's been an evolution uh, starting at that point. Very cool. And myself, I mean, I, I've always been really interested in um, arts and photography. And um, I mean, Charlie and I met when I was like literally 18 years old. So it's been quite a journey over, you know, two decades together. And, you know, it's it's really cool to be um, involved in something that, you know, as a young person you've dreamed of. And then as an adult, you see everything kind of coming to fruition. Well, it's interesting because the two of you are both out there together as educators. You're both out there together as photographers and artists. And there's so many things that that you share. And just before this podcast started for our listeners, we were talking about when when I remember my first, I guess my first presentation broadcast, or actually it wouldn't have been a broadcast, I think it was just a uh, a blog post from Together in Style. And Jennifer, you were talking about ideas for entertaining over the December holidays. And that diversity has, you guys have stayed true to that constantly, well, I don't know constantly, but continually changing and morphing into some other aspect of uh, lifestyle development. And I, I'd love to hear where did uh, or or when did um, together in style start to take shape? And also, and also, let's talk about where you see it going because right now it's so relevant where everybody is hunkered down. But as I've reminded everybody in other podcasts and blog posts, hunkered down doesn't mean hunkered down from your business. It's what you've got to do to stay safe and healthy. So let's talk about a little bit about together in style and also things you guys are doing now? Well, I think, uh, you know, we've been surrounded by, surrounded by so much lifestyle work organically. Um, we photographed many different books with celebrity party planner David Tutera early on, um, and we were just constantly creating lifestyle-driven work. And what we realized along the way with that was that we were bringing to the table a lot of creativity to the photo shoots and we realized that we had our own knack for the vision of lifestyle. And so as we started to interact and started to move more towards video, we felt like we should be sharing this so that we can build trust with our clients on a deeper level than I can just tote a camera. I'm actually someone who has uh, a sense of style. And so uh, I think that's where it kind of evolved from. Yeah. And interesting enough, like we've always been a, a, the type of people that have embraced change. We've always uh, seek new opportunities, whether it was in photography or expanding our own um, uh, availabilities and sharing our ideas with our clients and, you know, sharing ourselves as lifestyle uh, experts and other avenues, um, such as like home decor or recipes or um, just particular you know, we would do like little inspirational shoots. And basically, it gave our clients a different uh, perspective of who we were. And it also challenged us um, personally to come up with um, specific ideas and see them come to life. You know, I'm curious about you just mentioned um, the word challenge. And one of the favorite things that I love to ask is um, about an artist's challenge, a photographer's challenges, the challenges that we all face as we grow our businesses and develop as as artists. And so I'm curious, as you've gone through this evolution um, of imaging and video and together in style, are there any challenges that you kind of stumbled on along the way? And how did you overcome that? I think daily we have challenges and it's one of those things that is a part of everyday life and mm -hmm. it's a growing pain um, and I'm happy to have them because ultimately it ends up in something that um, I've either learned a lesson uh, one way or another 
And um, and it's really a, a cool thing to do. It's it's interesting to go outside your comfort zone and to start to recognize the potential in living um, without feeling a ground floor. You know, it's during times like this where you're excited about the ideas of, of different opportunities or you're you, it's not that you're not scared or you're not, you know, embracing the the concept of what's happening today. It's just that you can kind of channel your energy into refocusing um, to, you know, better yourself and to not be in a rut. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things we always talk about for every photographer, in fact, it's for every small business owner, is your business is driven by relationship building. And when Charles talked a minute ago about about lifestyle and finding more depth in your relationships with your clients and building that out, there are so many things that I've seen you guys do that are so lifestyle oriented. It's it's sort of like if if Martha Stewart had a dream of how she would reach more people. You know, you guys have hit the ingredients. And one of the things I'm thinking about right now is the shoot you did, Jennifer, in the vineyard in Italy for Panasonic. I mean, it it covered it covered so many different aspects. One, your role as a photographer and an artist. And then on the other side of the coin, just the fact that you're in this gorgeous vineyard. Um, you guys do like great wines. I've been out to dinner. In fact, I promised I wouldn't say this, but I did make you drink a really bad <laughs> A bottle of wine once. Um, <laughs> it's, a learning it's, experience. It was a learning experience. <laughs> Although it's it's funny, and for anybody that's ever been in Chicago, we were in Greek Town, and we went for the House Red at one of the local restaurants, which tastes really good. But you've got to get through the first three glasses for to recognize it as a great <laughs> wine. <laughs> Very true. These, that's right. Some of these projects you guys have taken on, like the Panasonic shoot in the vineyard. Um, Charles, you're a, you're, you're a musician. You're also a painter. Um, where, where's the, where do the ideas for some of these things come from? And at the same time, how do you tie those back into making sure they're, they're in line or, or, or hitting that, that special sweet spot with your clients and your readers and listeners? Well, I think, you know, my goal is just to become the best version of myself um, so I don't really think of myself as a photographer. Yes, we have to make a living, but I've never really made the creativity about money. I just always made it about becoming the best version of me. And so as I start to you know, navigate all of these different things, I say I've built this strange, diverse portfolio uh, surrounding so many things because life led me in a diverse <laughs> Uh, many, many different directions. And so some of it happened by chance. You know, I, we lived next door to a painter in New York for many years and a uh, pretty well-known painter. And I started shooting some video of him and he uh, one day said, you should start painting. And he showed me some technique. And then I just fell in love with that process and kept running with it. And the same is pretty much true for music. You know, I'm late to the music game um, and but it's something that I'm passionate about. I keep evolving and growing. I have friends that um, are, have been in a band for many years, which I'm now a part of. And uh, it's just keeping an open mind, I guess you could say, and letting life kind of uh, blow me whatever direction it wants and then taking charge of the things that I enjoy. And to add to what Charlie is saying, I mean, the, the thing is that when we do something different and we share with our clients a different side of ourselves, it it keeps our clients interested and it keeps our clients um, wanting to hang out with us and can't wait to see us at, at the next photo shoot. So we have some casual conversation. So it gives everybody like a little inside glimpse of, of who we are as individuals and artists above and beyond the work that we provide for them as, as clients. I think, what are, I think it sounds strange if, to me even sometimes, but you do look back and there are many artists, you know, Andy Warhol, for instance, who cross so many genres um, so I don't think it's unusual to do what we're doing. I just think that we've embraced it. By the way, Andy Warhol is a much better comparison than my Martha Stewart. But <laughs> you know. We've embraced our weirdness. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, but that weirdness right now, God, that, that weirdness right now has never been in greater demand because we all, we all need to remember that weirdness. I mean, I would... I, Sheila and I were talking this morning because 
you know, Ellen DeGeneres got shredded for making a comment of, you know, this is like being in jail. Mm. Um, and yet she's in, I don't know, 10,000 square feet on 10 <laughs> acres of land and whatever. <laughs> right. yeah. um, it's it's hardly in jail. And what bothered me about it, and Sheila too, is that people forget the millions of dollars that Ellen DeGeneres has given back to the world mm -hmm. in in so many different charities. And when she said in reference to being in jail, um, you don't need to hang her for that comment. It's not jail the way we would think of, but the fact that she can't get out more and she can't be with more people is what she's talking about. Sure. And as you guys are sitting there, because all of us right now are sort of in jail, um, what are some of the things you guys are doing that that might have been different during this pandemic that you're sharing with your clients, readers, and followers? Uh, well, one of the things I've been doing is just going live on Facebook playing music. Um, and it's it's great because live chat, Jennifer and I will be here in the art studio and we'll see clients jump in and chime in all the way from London one the other day. And uh, they just hang out with us. And it's just so cool to be able to, you know, play a song and then interact with people kind of like we're doing now and just uh, um be in solidarity with one another and just kind of uh, hanging out together um, just because we can't be out doing that normally. And so it's, I think it's great that our clients and friends are joining us on that side of things. And that's one of the things we're doing. Yeah, above and beyond that, I mean, I took the initiative to as soon as this, um, you know, was kind of getting into effect around here, you know, that we had to hunker down it. I called all of my clients to make sure that they were doing okay and to check on them and to just not ask them so much or talk to them about photography, but just to, you know, say hello and to let them know that we're here and we're healthy. And, you know, if there's anything that we could possibly do, please feel free to reach out. And I think that that's all that we can do. And, and at the same token, we recognize how much joy we do bring into people's lives. I mean, we are their uh, go-to people for, capturing these beautiful moments so we're constantly making sure that we're inspirational posts are going out that we're you know putting out a message of hope and and possibility because during times like this it's you know so important to you know re-remind people that everything's going to be okay yeah we try to stay off the misery train <laughs> <laughs> well we've stopped i mean we've stopped watching the news i also did some digging yesterday because i got really frustrated with the never-ending change in in what well, you called it the misery train mm. and i was surprised and didn't realize that i believe it was the 2017-18 flu season killed close to 60,000, and the following year was i believe 34-2 were the numbers from the CDC. And I'm not saying that COVID-19 isn't deadly. I'm not saying that we're not all in pain, and especially my heart goes out to families who have lost loved ones. But what the media has done has just changed so much focus and instilled so much fear. And we need to hunker down and be safe and not do stupid things. But there are still so many cool things that are going on out there and there's still so many different ways to share. And I'm sorry, my questions today are so long winded, but it's really more <laughs> a comment. When I, I did a podcast earlier in the week with a, a webinar with Brent Watkins on the corn con thing. And I made a comment about one of the best things you can do to keep in touch with your clients right now is to pick up the phone and call them, not a text, not an email. And everybody listening right now has clients and people that they need to talk to. And just a call. You weren't selling anything. You just planted the seed of, hey, don't forget we're out here and we're here to help. And if there's something that you need, let us know. And that's such an important part of being quarantined right now and in lockdown. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no one's alone. And, um, you know, you want to make sure that people realize that um, as a community, as a, a person that, you know, feels like they have a responsibility with their clients to, um, you know, just make sure that, you know, we we recognize that we appreciate, you know, their loyalty and we want them to know that we're there for them. You know, that definitely goes a long, long way. And just as important as keeping in touch with our clients, I think it's also really important that we foster our creativity. During a pandemic like this, just talking to other photographers and even experiencing this myself to an extent, it's like when you're 
watching the news and hearing all the negative, the negativity, it can sap your creativity and your passion. And Charles, I love that you mentioned that you were on Facebook Live just playing music. And I'm curious for the both of you, um, what other ways are you kind of keeping your creative juices flowing? Do you have any personal projects going on right now or how do you keep that up? Uh, I'm, I've always got pers- five or six personal projects. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I've actually been going out with my Lumix S1 lately and just kind of walking around our yard and, you know, spring is starting to be in bloom and mm. I've been challenging myself to see the beauty between the thorns. And I say it that way because I just put a video out uh, related to that where I, I literally photographed the briars in our yard and just, you know, if you look at it from the right perspective, there's so many creative opportunities as a photographer and it's actually been kind of bringing us quite a bit of joy. No, I'm not photographing people and doing portraits or weddings, but now I'm forcing myself and challenging myself to see the beauty in the simplest of things. And I think that's one thing that photographers can get out and do. And quite honestly, I'm realizing realizing I'm starting to build this little landscape portfolio at the same time, which is kind of cool. Well, I called you the day that you put up some of those images of just rocks on the beach in California. Now, I know driving up and down the coast of California right now is is not on the list of things that um, anybody is going to be out there doing. But just the fact that you – there were just rocks on the beach. And I, and I kept looking at them, and the more I looked at them, the more I could perceive any one of those images – you know, as a as a forty by sixty print mm. in either in a home with a great cathedral ceiling or over a fireplace, or it's going to be even bigger on an office wall in a in some corporate kind of environment. And I think finding that diversity is really important. And in fact, let's talk about one of the things that that there's a quote out there somewhere that I've shared before that says growth only starts outside your comfort zone. What are some of the things when you've got a project idea and it's it's going off in a direction that you have never been in before? What are the, some of the things you start doing to just get yourself psyched up and not give up when, you know, the first image or the first thing you've done looks like it's going to be a dismal failure? Kind of like something I tried to cook for Sheila the other night that we will never do again. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had those. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunate circumstances. Um, I think that, you know, during the times where you're unsure and and making kind of uh, you have a blank slate and you're just trying to make something out of nothing, um, you recognize uh, how how capable you are. And in the end, those are the times where, you know, I can remember certain moments um, in our careers where we'd finished a, a photo shoot and it went so fast that you're like, I hope we got, I can't even, I don't even know what we did, <laughs> you know, cause you're just, you're mentally just making things happen and, and flying um, just at the seat of your pants. But at the same token, you're making split decision um, ideas and you're just relying on your instincts. And when you get back to those basics or you, you find yourself in those situations, you recognize how truly capable you really are. So I love those types of moments. Um, it, they sometimes are, are definitely uh, heated and they, they have a lot of energy to them. But if you can get through them and um, just kind of, uh, I guess, be quiet in your, in your mind – Um, to to let things flow through you. Um, Usually things end up in really unique situations where you would never have had them before. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I I think the hardest part of some of the projects I do is starting. You know, when I sit down to write a song, sitting down is the hardest part. Um, Same thing with a painting. Starting, it's the hardest part. But once you're in the flow and start moving, you realize just keep working is usually my answer to finding my way to something that evolves in a way that I couldn't have seen it coming from the start. So I don't usually approach things with an idea of I'm going to go out and make this or, you know, paint this or write this type of song and just start listening and let it, let the universe kind of deliver the message of where I should take things. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. It does. It does. I want to, I want to switch gears for a second. Uh, what are some of the things right now we've got couples all over the world 
that have been quarantined and locked in together um, for the last, well, for the most part, for the last month, certainly in the U.S. for the last month. I'm laughing because on the one of the one of the DJs the other day made a comment that we're going to see an explosion in the birth rate in nine months. <laughs> and then and then he also said, and we might see the divorce rate climb. <laughs> what are some of the things you guys are doing to get through some of those stressful moments where where as a couple you've just been together day and night for the last 30 days? Silence. <laughs> I, I, we can edit well, this out if you want. They say, they say, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So uh, <laughs> Jennifer's been making some really great dinners and meals and just, you know, trying to still um, celebrate, you know. And I, and I think right now this isn't the time to uh, look forward in fear. It, it is the time to celebrate each other and your family and those that are close to you and, and try to make things as meaningful as possible. And I think that's just kind of how we're approaching it. Yeah. And I mean, the the thing is that this is not an uncommon question for us. It happens to be a very relevant question right now because people are stuck together. Um, but, you know, we've been working together for over 20 years and over, you know, 15 of them in a very close quarters and um so we we wake up every morning together we work together every day and i i know that you know we've learned over the years that we don't take things personally like if some if either one of us has a moment where we're not the 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 sunniest of personalities we don't hold it against each other um and we make sure that we just kind of let each other get through it because we we realize that we're just trying to do the best we can. So I think that that's like a a big thing. And also having your own space and freedoms to allow your own personal growth, like enjoy everybody's conversation. But at the same token, if it's something that you want to do or somebody else wants to do, let them have their own time, you know, don't hover and don't always be, you don't have to be together always. Um, And I think that when you do that, you have more of it, a a personal attraction towards one another because you're interested in the concept that somebody is bettering themselves or or trying something new. So it's a good thing to, you know, be together, but also, you know, enjoy enjoy your own personal self as well. Well, I had this big smile on my face when Charles talked about you cooking um, (laughs) because I was on, I caught Arlene Evans from WPPI on an IM and she's a mutual friend of all of ours. And I asked her, you know, how are you guys doing? And she said, well, Mark is baking bread today as I continue on the, what she's calling the Corona 15, which, <laughs> which is always, which, which has been a joke over the years of, you know, kids go off to college and they put on the freshman 15, which is 15 pounds mm-hmm. that freshman year. So she's doing the Corona 15 as, as Mark was baking bread. Uh, and that's, I mean, suddenly our, our grill it has become outrageously important in this house. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, along with, in fact, I've, I've been sharing pictures online of of Joy from other photographers, and there've been an awful lot of images of of dogs and cats, and our our pets yeah. start to fill in um, some of the blank spaces right now. So. Yeah, same for us. Absolutely. Yeah. So the the creature comforts are always the best comforts, and um, you know. It's one of those things where since you can't, you know, control what's happening, you can only control how you react to it. Well, one of the things I found when I started my own company in 2009 and was going to be in a home office, it really is important to get up and start the day with some kind of routine as opposed to rolling out of bed, um, brushing your teeth at two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> and uh, and staying in sweats all day. And, no and question. Yeah, acting like it's all right, you know, I'm I'm headed off to the office. In fact, I used to laugh about pulling out of the garage and then back in again um <laughs> just to enjoy my commute to work and listen to a little, you know, serious on the radio. I couldn't agree more. It's funny cuz I've been doing a lot of um FaceTimes with my friends lately just because we can't get together and um in the afternoons they're, you know, they'll look at me and say, "Wow, you look so 
pretty like you just you know you got dressed up today and I like I get dressed up every day or I would never get anything done you know if if you have the mindset that you know today's a day that you don't want to waste and you want to make sure that you're you know you're working to your fullest potential you have to take that shower you have to have you know your morning routine and to feel your best to to make it your best so if you stay in sweats which believe me we all have those days where we need it uh, to recharge um, but at the same token if you make a, a if that a habit it's not necessarily the best one to get yourself in because I'm sure it's a very hard one to break afterwards <laughs> Jennifer, I love that point. That, that's that's so huge right now, sticking to a schedule. Um, that's actually something we mentioned on the F64 Lunch Punch that we've been doing lately, where we have a group of people on and we talk about a group of photographers and creatives and talking about how we're basically staying creative and what we can do for our business. And it was brought up that sticking to a schedule is key right now. And, and taking time to... Um, well, first of all, getting up at a certain time, but then taking time to appreciate your family, your friends, appreciate your business, work on your business, appreciate your creativity. Because like Skip mentioned earlier, this pandemic is not going to last forever. And we're not going to be hunkered down, you know, social distancing forever. And when things do begin to go back to normal in stages, we want to hit the ground running, not just as business owners, but creatives in general and so i love that point that we just can't can't grow stagnant oh no no no. and i think too this is a time for um while you have it to to really kind of dive deep into who you are i mean you have that opportunity you might as well take advantage of you know really setting those priorities into you know savoring those moments well, I think one of the things everybody needs to start doing is stop watching the news. Oh, my goodness, yeah. yes. Just yes. watch it. Just watch it less. In fact, I've gotten three or four emails from different associations and different companies that that have talked about everybody being on overload with, well, Charles, you said it, the misery train. Mm-hmm. And it's not that it's not serious. I don't want to minimize anything or the pain anybody is going through, but The reality is we've got no choice but to get through it all together. And we're all part of an industry that traditionally has always watched each other's backs, helped helped each other, and there's so much help and support out there. Absolutely. Yeah, well said. So we have just flown through this interview. I can't believe how fast the time goes. I've said it before and I'll say it again now and I mean it. It just flies by. But I do want to make sure we get to our favorite Last question, do the both of you have any advice for photographers who are just starting out, especially right now in this unique time in history? I would say take take this time to go photograph some things that you wouldn't normally photograph, the things that you wouldn't photograph for money. Mm. Because when you come out of this, you may find that you've got just a, a, a whole new portfolio and a perspective that you can share with the world. And, um, you know, having diversity in your portfolio and in your work is one of the most important things that we've done. The reason being is that, you know, in times like these, in the times of the recession of 08, um, we found that diversity was our best friend. When weddings were, you know, canceled or postponed, we had portraits to work on or we had other projects commercially that we could work on. So I think building a diverse portfolio is really key to longevity in your business and not getting bogged down when something, when the economy does upend. And my advice would be to um, expose yourself to different styles of art. You know, don't necessarily always focus on other photographers. It's definitely great to uh, know photography and the history of photography and to have your favorites. But at the same token, you know, look at painters, look at, you know, different styles of sculptures, look at, uh, you know, different ideas of theater and dance and uh, films. And I think that when you do that and you open your mind to different possibilities, it kind of gives you the spark of who and what it is that you personally like and it will kind of define your own uh, path and journey which will make you stand out above and beyond anybody else great advice love it love it 
And, and you're absolutely right. Now is the perfect time to find out who you are. The perfect time. Because we all yeah. have a bit of extra time on our hands. So, oh, I want to make sure and ask, where can we find you online to check out your work? So uh, you can follow us on YouTube at Together in Style. We do a lot of behind-the-scenes content. I uh, put music videos out. I mean, we, it's basically a, a, a well-rounded scenario of all the creativity that's flowing from us and our studio. Um, and certainly photographically, you can go to marringvisuals.com. And that's M-A-R-I-N-G visuals.com. And uh, that's our photography portfolio where you can see the type of work that we do with the camera, how we make a living. Excellent. We'll make sure to include both of those links in the show notes. And Skip, where can folks hunt you down online? It's always the same. Everything that I share every day is at skipcohenuniversity.com. I'm also Skip Cohen on Facebook and Skip Cohen on Twitter. And you'll also find both Shamara and I over at platypod.com. Um, and Shamara, where would they find you? Folks can hunt me down. They can send me an email at Shamira at, excuse me, wow, messing up my own email, Shamira at photofocus.com. That is Shamira, my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. Send me an email with questions, ideas. We love getting feedback from our listeners because it shapes how we move forward with this show and the awesome guests that we have on the show. And speaking of awesome guests, Charles, Jennifer, thank you again. This is just, this has been amazing. Yeah, it's been a show. joy. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. You shared guys. a lot of great insight that I think uh, may hit home with a lot of our listeners. Good stuff. Absolutely. Well, thank you and be well. And we also want to thank our listeners for joining us too. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they have the burning desire to improve their photography business, especially during this unique time in history. We all have a bit of extra time on our hands. So what better thing to do than tune in to some cool podcasts like this one? We look forward to having you with us next time on Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platinum Pod, Photofocus, and Skip Cone University.